Good morning, everyone. I wanted to share with you today my morning practice. Sometimes I practice this uh, yoga sequence, and I've been finding it's a really awesome yoga sequence, and I wanted to uh, share it with you so you can give it a try and see how you feel. I find it's really healing, really simple, and um, if I'm feeling like I'm not full energy, then uh, it's the best practice for me. Um, I call it my yin yang sequence, which is it's more yin, but there's a nice kind of yang ending So I think you'll enjoy it. I'll share it with you now So each pose we're holding for about two minutes I start off holding Caterpillar pose For about two minutes Relax the neck, breathe into your lower back. Breathe into the back of your heart, spread your collarbones. Two minutes there, then release, come on up. And then half butterfly pose, tucking the heel in. Left leg straight, inhale up. Exhale, ball forward, two minutes in this pose. I'm pulling my right hip back and I'm pushing my left heel forward. So I'm pressing these two bits apart, but I'm turning my navel out towards the left side, out towards the side of the straight leg. So I'm turning out towards the left side through my spine and I'm breathing into my right kidney. So I'm breathing into the kidney of the knee that's bent. So if it's my right knee that's bent, I'm breathing into my right kidney. Relax the neck, broaden the collarbones. Two minutes and then swap sides. And then after the second side, you can hold it for less than two minutes, but I hold it for about two minutes. And then do a twist. Nice spinal twist. Breathing into the heart, breathing into the spine. Then two minutes on the other side. Really rinsing out through the spine. Breathing into the spine and the heart. Really detoxing. Then the next is Padakonasana. Knees go wide, soles of the feet open up like pages of a book. Use your thumbs to pry open the soles of the feet. Use your elbows to push the knees down. Once you release the knees down to the floor, then you can start to walk the hands forward. Draw your heart and your navel towards your feet and your forehead towards the earth. After about two minutes, you can come on up. <clears throat> and when you're ready, you can do diamond pose. Diamond pose is with the legs at about 130 degrees. So my legs are almost straight. They're a slight bend. Yeah. And then maybe 120 degrees. And then I stretch forward towards my heel, so I'm getting my head forward and down, forward and down, forward and down. And breathing into my outer thighs, the outside of my thighs and the outside of my hips. And my lower back. I'm staying there for about two minutes as well. And then square pose. Also known as phylog pose, I like to call it phylog pose. And then you can fold forward. Basically, I'm taking my left shin parallel to the front of the mat and then stacking my right ankle over my left knee and then folding forward. Try and flex your feet. Try and work all the way forward and down, forward and down. And try and feel the hips separating apart and you're getting a nice opening through the sides of your hips and you're breathing into the sides of the hips here. And then swap sides. 
fold forward, fold in down. Try and get your forehead to the floor, your heart towards your shin. Two minutes, both sides. And come on up. And you can rebound here. You can just relax, take a few breaths, rebound. Then come forward into either your Sphinx pose or you can come into seal pose. Rotate your biceps out. Take your feet wide-ish apart. So my feet are not together behind my back. They're about hip width apart. Breathing into your heart. You can close your eyes or look ahead. Two minutes here. Then you can come back into your child's pose. Two minutes here, resting, breathing. And then come into your toe squat. My toes are curled under, stretching out my feet. You can do some stretch for your wrists if you want. Breathing into the soles of your feet, breathing into your toes. And then release, come forward. And from here, go into your downward dog. Enjoy your downward dog for about two minutes. And then you can come forward into dangling. Here we're breathing into the lower back and the back of the heart. This is called dangling. You want to balance between the front and the back of your foot so the weight shouldn't be too far forward and the weight shouldn't be too far back, it should be balanced. Breathing into the back of the heart and your lower back and relaxing your head and your neck the whole time. Then from here, go into your yogic squat. Malasana. We're breathing all the way deep down into our hips, into our groin and into our reproductive organs. This is really good for the liver meridian, very good for sexual function. It's also really grounding. See if you can really relax the pelvic floor in this posture. You want to let it go to breathe into that space. And you come back onto your buttocks. And you take your legs as wide as you can. This is called straddle. Push your hips forward, take your legs wide, flex your feet back start here and then you start to walk the chest forward and down until you get your chest as low as you can then you hold that for about two minutes you're breathing into your inner thighs and your groin sending your awareness there breathing and feeling there two minutes here in straddle and then you can tuck your right heel into what's your groin and do revolved head to knee pose. So to describe what I'm doing here, the heel comes in towards my groin and turning it out towards the bent knee, like doing a twist. I take my opposite hand to my opposite thigh and I reach the other hand up and over towards my foot. It's okay if you can't reach it. Just hanging out here, breathing into the side body, breathing into the spaces between the ribs, the intercostal muscle. And just enjoying that stretch for two minutes on both sides. Relax your head and your neck. Breathe into your side body. Feel into your side body. Come on up. 
and then you release. Just rebound for a few minutes. Not for a few minutes, for a, a minute or so. And then you can go into your low lunge. And in your low lunge, you allow this knee to bow out to the side slightly and feel your toes are light. So the front of the feet is light and the heel is what engages into the earth. Lift your spine upright. You can have your hands on the floor here or you can have your hands on your front knee. Breathe all the way deep down into the front of your of the hip of the leg that's going back. So you're really opening up your psoas. Enjoy here for two minutes. You can rest halfway between, so one minute on and then a couple of breaths off, and then one minute on again if you need to, but it's usually okay just to hold for two minutes. It can be strong. And then you can do half Hanuman, which is just to straighten out that front leg and fold forward. Or if you're feeling really flexible at that stage, you can go into your full front splits or as much of your front splits as you can. Try and keep your front knee engaged so you're almost like dragging your heel towards you. So it's kind of like you're engaging your hamstring and you're scissoring your legs towards each other. Gently. Once again, you hold this for two minutes. You come up, and from here you can just release your hips, just rock from side to side, rebound, and then go into the other side. So this is dragon in Yin Yoga. This is known as dragons. So you're bowing the knee out to the side, the toes are light, the heel is engaged into the earth, opening up the front of your hip, that's of the leg that's going back. Hands can rest on the knee, or they can touch the floor if you're low enough. Two minutes here, breathing into the front of your hip. And then when you're ready, after about two minutes, you can straighten that front leg and you can fold forward or if you want to go into your full splits stay here for about two minutes it can be less if you want to you can hold it for much less you can hold it for 10 breaths or you can hold it for a minute which is about the same amount of time if you breathe really slowly but yeah a minute is okay too <clears throat> And then when you're ready, you can release, release your hips, release your legs. And here, sometimes I like to go into a little bit of a um, prone shavasana. So just rebound by laying on your tummy and resting for a few breaths. And then after you've done that, you can go into your headstand. Only do headstand if you're really confident of your headstand and you know exactly the technique. If I've showed you the technique, then you know the technique, so I've taught you properly. I'm not gonna teach you the full technique now, I'll just teach you just a couple of basic, basic things. So re remember, you're only doing headstand if you know the technique and you're confident of it. So here, I'm grabbing my opposite bicep, I interlace my fingers, but not my little digit, my little digit overlaps. Thumbs point upwards, so it's the ulna bone that's pressing into the floor, it's a strong, structure. My shoulders drop away from my ears so my lap muscles are engaged and my elbows can fully push into the floor that way. It's not the very crown of the head, it's a little bit forward of the crown of the head that you're touching to the earth. Close the jaw gently and look about 10 centimeters out onto the earth in front of you. Never jump up, just keep your hips pushing forward. You can bend your knees to come up or you can keep your legs straight which is a bit more advanced. Holding that for about 10 breaths and then resting in child's pose. And then you finished. 
then do an extended shavasana on your back so you lie down on your back for about 10 maybe even 15 minutes I love to do it for 15 minutes or so so if you get to do it for 15 minutes wow it's beautiful it's an awesome way to finish your practice and that's the sequence that's the yin yang yoga sequence that I've been practicing some mornings and I'm really enjoying it and I hope you really enjoy it too and I really hope to connect with you soon leave some comments below I'll speak to you soon